Hello everyone, Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, ACY Securities, and we've got a little bit of um, sweet and bitter today. We've got very sweet news for most of the population because it's Friday and the weekend's coming and can have a great time. And for those who are, of us who are passionate about markets like you, well, it's a sad time because we won't be able to trade over the weekend, except obviously in cryptos. Uh, but otherwise, markets will be closed and that's always quite a sad feeling uh, late on Fridays. But in terms of what's going on in the world, there's plenty of excitement and opportunity about. There's certainly an overall economic stability, I think, returning to the global economy. So I, like many other people, have been talking about how the global economy was slowing, and it is, and it will slow further, but it's not falling off a cliff. The United States could still fall off a cliff, though, because of the banking crisis, because it's now rumored that there may actually be thousands of small and regional banks that are already technically insolvent. And if they were forced to bring their bonds to market valuation, uh, they'd be out of business. So the, that's massive. And everyone just seems to like trot it off, da 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 da. It's massive. So. I mean, it's way worse than the GFC because the GFC mostly impacted the larger banks that, you know, got rich by selling a product that didn't make sense because mathematicians said the probability said that it was okay, but they didn't look out the window, apply it to the common sense and understand that if there was an economic slowdown, everyone would have trouble buying these, uh, you know, paying their mortgages, which they should never have taken out in the first place. So it was uh, mathematic reductionist philosophy gone crazy, which created a very real world problem for those banks that did those products initially and then for everyone around the world. And remember, the European sovereign debt crisis was caused by the same US investment banks and then European investment banks who unsold those instruments to governments. So just always realize that Often, yes, all roads do lead to Rome. And in uh, New York at the moment, it is a case of still, uh, I think, overly optimistic markets. So equity markets have been falling sharply as I expected, uh, getting it right for a change. And I think the US dollar is a bit of a mixed bag because really, do you buy the euro against the US dollar when the euro still has all sorts of problems itself? Um, so that's a very mixed bag. But overall, I'm bearish the US dollar. The Australian dollar and the Australian stock market are having a bit of a rally today on good news coming out of banks. Uh, but I'm not sure that will last going into the future, but some of it will. Um, inflation is moderating around the world, but it's going to plateau at a way too high level, as we're already seeing in the United States. And this will happen else elsewhere in the world too. So we're going to sort of go through the middle of the year and into the end of the year with still too high inflation wherever you look, still with tightening biases, slowing in rate increases, as we've seen in the ECB yesterday, 25 points, but they're going to do more of those. Uh, RBA is still hiking rates. ECB, sorry, the Federal Reserve, we don't know that they are on pause yet. They said they will consider the extent of, at, of further hikes at further meetings. So they are most likely on hold, but they're not really on hold. And uh, they could even, if inflation data between now and the next FOMC accelerates, there will be another rate hike. Um, but I'm not bearish stocks really because of the interest rate outlook which we've probably got right more than any other financial institution in the world over the last two years. Don't mind if we say so ourselves. Um, but I'm bearish stocks because of the dysfunctional, dislocated nature of the US economy, which everyone's trying to tiptoe around. I've talked about that a lot in the past, so I'm not gonna go over that again. But I do think that this move down in equities could have a rally. I mean, there could be a lot of short positions, speculative short-term short positions that need to be closed before the weekend. As I said earlier, yes, markets close on the weekend, unfortunately. Um, so I think there's a small chance of a rally, but then there's also the risk of some rather big funds beginning to go, 
what if there isn't an economic boom and the United States isn't okay and the banking crisis is going to get a lot worse? Tightening credit means a lot lower consumer uh, borrowings, means lower business borrowings, means a fault for further faltering of the US economy. Not good. We might lighten our load before we go into the weekend because it's unlikely that there's going to be good news over this weekend. If there's a risk on the news front over this weekend, it could be bad news about more banks getting into trouble uh, and secretive, highly panicked uh, treasury meetings or something in New York City with some of the big banks again to rescue another bank. Who knows what might happen? Because they tend to tell us after it's sort of already happening. Um, but yes, the risk going into the weekend is that there are negative surprises rather than positive surprises. Um, and yes, Russia could retaliate against the drone strike, but really it was a small drone strike that was never going to make it. Uh, and by the way, Russia didn't really come out officially and blame America as all of the media headlines are telling you. What happened was in a press conference, the press spokesman said something along the lines, because it all gets lost in translation, of, um, you know, the drone attack was definitely, we believe, from Ukraine. Uh, and he was asked a question. I think he said it may have had US assistance, but he was asked a question. I think I don't think he did in his original statement. And it was only when he was asked a question from the press gallery that he said, well, about US involvement. And he says, well, all of these things eventually are decided in Washington. And he tended to have a momentary, like, um, let's just go hard on Washington, uh, emotional outburst. Uh, it wasn't that the military had said that this was orchestrated by the United States. So I think that's been a bit of a beat up story. I do think there was obviously a um, drone attack on the Kremlin. They didn't do it to themselves um, and they weren't meaning to officially state that the United States was behind it. And I think that will get washed away and even reassessed um, perhaps in the next 24 hours of press conferences in Moscow. Uh, but regardless, there's been a few things happening in Russia that haven't been red flag operations. And um, each time they happen, you know, such as people, uh, Ukrainian soldiers with machine guns opening up in a suburb in uh, across the border at one time about two weeks ago. But whenever that's why there was the six, I'm not pro-Russia. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to get it right, okay? And it's important for markets because the degree of the Russian response, who knows what it can ignite, but I don't think it's going to be a massive response. It's, there's going to be a targeted response, uh, but I think it will be minimal to moderate and it will just be sort of a tit for tat thing. And it won't be aimed at Zelensky. Remember it right at the start of the war. I'm not sure it might've been with the Israeli prime minister at the time. I'm not hundred percent sure, but the Israelis were trying to negotiate a peace. But Putin was asked to promise as part of a, 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 you know, sort of ceasefire dialogue that he would not target Zelensky. And he made that promise and he has kept that promise um, so far. But if he's being targeted, that might change that scenario. So again, there is a little bit of a risk um, over the weekend and it's not a happy risk, but it is a negative risk. So I think some fund managers in New York today will be thinking about, is it really worth holding any additional positions that we don't have to really have at this point? Should we just trim a little bit? And if big funds decide to trim a little bit, that's a lot of selling, uh, especially as there isn't quite the euphoria buying to counterbalance that and provide liquidity at the moment that there had been for a few months there. So I think that whole process has run its course. And as I said, well, you know, I did say ahead of time, it's going to be a slow motion rolling over top in US stocks. That's what we've seen. The Australian market's having a bit of a run of its own today on the banks, but that might hit a wall if New York continues to roll over. So just be careful of that. If you're making money being long today, you might want to think about taking profits or just hold with tight stops going to New York. That's all, you know, up to you. Uh, but they're the, that's the kind of feelings of the market at the moment. Uh, economic data, ECB hiked by 25 points. They're going to keep hiking. Um, 
there was a uh, PMI, services PMI for China today, which declined, but it declined still in expansionary, you know, so China's still going to be strong growth, but not outstanding. But also it was the Keijin, which I gave a speech for them at their annual summit in Beijing a few years back, the Keijin survey, which is a survey of only sort of four to 500 organizations. Uh, and they tend to be mainly uh, in the export sectors and they do not, that survey tends not to include the major state run companies or state owned companies or state major state companies. And that's why it can often be inaccurate to a degree because the official data involves a survey of over 4,000 companies and includes all the biggest companies and state run companies, etc. So it's more diverse, it's a more solid economic data series than is the Keijin, but the Keijin still has its value. Um, that's about all I've got to say really, because the US dollar is very mixed at the moment. If anything, I would sell the US dollar. The yen's been on a good run. Uh, that could continue, but with volatility. I am thinking it's time to be you know, buying into oil because oil's way oversold. Um, and I still like gold as the ultimate alternative if risk scenarios and geopolitical tensions were to continue to increase. Uh, gold is still, given that, the Europe, that Europe could have problems um, and China could have problems, like there's geopolitical tensions about the three potential reserve currencies. And this will help, as has been helping gold. Uh, I hope you've been reading my comments in Reuters regularly, almost weekly, but I think gold is probably on its way significantly higher, probably 2110 in the near term, 2250 is possible by the end of the year in US dollars. But I've been tending to buy gold both simultaneously, it's a big word, let me try it again. Simultaneously trying to buy gold against both the Euro and the US dollar, and they tend to sort of ratchet up, taking turns at where the better return is. But being diversified there helps solve that problem of, are you trading gold or are you trading the US dollar? Maybe just diversify a little bit uh, around that. I hope you uh, have a very good Friday afternoon. I'm very sorry that you won't be able to trade except in crypto markets over the weekend, uh, but I wish you all the very best and uh, do enjoy the weekend anyway. Thank you.